OK, so grazing is going to have a large effect on animals that live on the reef. They, uh, grazers are going to eat algae. Right? They're going to eat the primary producers. Particularly, these grazers really, really like the larger, fleshier seaweeds because those seaweeds grow quickly. Um, and they're also like much more delicious for the herbivores. So they will eat the uh, algae, particularly the larger, fleshier seaweeds, um, because they're good for them. When they eat those larger, fleshier seaweeds, those actually, al those grazers actually allow for other types of algae to survive, like the turf algae that we've been talking about. Okay, so um, those fleshier seaweeds grow very quickly and would actually take over the whole reef. And so the grazers keep them in check and prevent them from taking over the whole reef, but also allow for other types of algae to have a chance to survive, like our turf algae. Okay, as you go down deeper on the reef, the amount of herbivory or grazing decreases, because as you go deeper, there's less sunlight, so there's fewer and fewer plants that can survive, right? So as you go deeper, you get like more and more things like sponges that would be just filter feeders rather than like plants. Does that make sense? So herbivory decreases with depth. And then one kind of interesting thing that occurs, um, one of the interactions is with damselfish. So damselfish are like little farmers. So they kind of get their little patch of turf algae and they guard that little patch of turf algae. So if anything, like another damselfish or other fish come and try and feed on this little turf algae patch, they'll chase them away. They're like, this is my spot, okay? So they, they keep that little spot. Um, and if anything else tries to like start growing in there, they'll take it out. Okay, so they keep this like little turf algae spot just for their own feeding pleasure. Okay, um, that little turf algae spot provides a little habitat for other things like small crustaceans and stuff to live in. Um, so you'll have lots of other animals that will live in there. The damselfish doesn't mind those guys because they don't eat the algae. So they don't mind them living in that area. Okay, um, around those turf algae spots, okay, you get mostly fast growing branching coral because the other types of coral would be smothered by the turf algae. Okay, so you get the big branching corals that live near damselfish. Okay, predation. Okay, predation on the reef. Um, so, predation on the reef, you get lots of things eating other things. All right. Um, and things eating other things actually uh, helps to allow for lots of um, animals to persist on the reef. So things like sponges and soft corals and gorgonians, when they get eaten, they allow for the stony corals to survive and to grow on the reef. And that's good because if the stony cor corals didn't survive, then the reef would die. So predation of those things helps to allow for the reef to sur survive. Um, also, when most of the like coralivores, those things that eat the coral itself, um, those guys eat the branching corals, okay? Because those are have more of a delicate skeleton, and so they're easier to be eaten. Um, and so these guys eat these branching corals, which keep the check of the branching or keep the growth of the branching corals in check, and then um, allows for the mass of corals to survive, All right? Um, and then you also get like little invertebrates and stuff and fish uh, that are very, very well camouflaged. And actually the amount or degree of camouflage that you see on animals in the reef gives you some idea of just how strong uh, the pressure of predation is. Because the more well camouflaged they are, that tells you that they they need to be really well camouflaged because they're getting hunted a lot. Okay, So they have to be hidden very well. So uh, the fact that lots of reef animals are so well camouflaged tells you just how much predation occurs on the reef, okay? All right, so basically a coral reef ecosystem is extraordinarily complex, okay? Um, we've just very briefly talked about the different interactions that can occur. Um, and you take that and you multiply that by like thousands of different animals that live on the reef, you get a huge food web with all sorts of interactions that can occur. So lots of stuff going on. We've just simplified it a lot. Okay, <clears throat> so let's look at some conservation issues with reefs. Basically, reefs are dying. 
Okay, and they're dying at an unprecedented rate. So back in 1999, there was an article that was reported where uh, a third of all the coral reefs worldwide are dead, and 90% of the two thirds that remain okay, are damaged. Okay, so pretty much, I mean, coral reefs, the ecosystems are dying off, okay, which is not good. Um, and then in 2000, there was an article that was released that predicted that between 2030 and 2050, okay, all of the coral reefs would be dead or damaged beyond repair. Okay. And actually, in 2014, they just released a study um, that said that um, the death of the reefs that are being monitored, so just those that we're actually like keeping an eye on, um, the death of those the death rate of those reefs has increased 30 okay, percent just in the past seven years. So I mean, coral reefs, lots of things are happening. Um, a reef dies when too many of the coral colonies die. Okay, and a coral colony dies when too many of the individual polyps on the coral colony dies. So, um, and that can happen for a variety of reasons, which we'll talk about. But basically, a reef dies when you get the coral colonies dying, and the colonies die when the individual polyps die. Yeah? Okay, so how do you actually get death of coral colonies in the reef? Storms can damage reefs. So with rising world temperatures, you get... Uh, more storms and more powerful storms and those storms can have huge waves that will break on the surface like on the reef crest and actually break the reefs apart uh, if the storm is powerful enough so storms can cause reefs to die and damage them um, they can also be smothered so we've been we talked about last cycle um, we talked about eutrophication so when you get excess nutrients that run into the water and that produces a phytoplankton bloom. That phytoplankton bloom will actually um, block the sunlight from the primary producers that live attached to the bottom. And when it blocks the sunlight, those primary producers die, and then the bacteria that decompose those use up the oxygen that's in the water and create this dead zone. You remember that? Okay, so you get eutrophication that occurs. You also get all sorts of like runoff from storms carrying sediment into the water, and that sediment will basically do the same thing and also settle down on the surface of the coral and block the sunlight from the coral. So the reefs get smothered. The reason why this is actually happening more and more recently is because um, people have discovered that shrimp farming is really a really lucrative business. People like to eat shrimp, it's like supposed to be healthy, yeah, um, and it's like low calorie, all, you know, all the fad and all the rage around here. Um, so shrimp farming is very profitable. And they found that mangrove forests, location of where mangrove forests are, is a really good spot for growing shrimp. Um, and you typically find mangrove forests in the tropics, right? And what you usually find are mangrove forests on the shore and then coral reefs in the water, okay? Mangrove forests serve the same function as our, our salt marshes, right? Filter food source nursery sponge. So they help to filter any water that gets into the ocean. So they'll filter out the excess nutrients and the pollutants and sediment and stuff before it gets to the water, therefore kind of like protecting the coral reefs. Well, the shrimp farmers have decided, hey, these mangrove forests are a great place to grow these shrimp. So they cut down the mangrove forests and build shrimp farms. Well, now you've lost the function of the mangrove forests. And so now you get all the sediment and nutrient runoff into the water, which is killing the coral reefs. And I mean, mangroves themselves are super important ecosystems as well. So that's one of the reasons why these reefs are dying. Okay. Um, water quality will also create stress. So as water temperatures increase, you get more and more bleaching of coral that will occur, and then they can't take up new duvanthellae, and then they die. Okay. Uh, corals actually can get sick, so they can get diseases, There's, and the disease literally travels through the colony. Um, and this kind of like band that you can see, it's called like black band disease or yellow band disease. Um, and it kills the coral colony, they get sick. Um, and then predation. So we keep getting these big like explosions of the crown of thorns sea star population. And crown of thorns sea stars eat coral. Um, and so as we get more and more of these crown of thorns, they eat more and more coral and kill coral reefs. Um, also people are hunting on reefs for several different reasons. 
to get coral for like aquariums, then also to get fish and stuff like that for aquariums as well. Because, you know, saltwater aquariums are really pretty to have in your house. The fish are beautiful. So there's an increased demand. Um, the problem is that the method that many of these fishermen are using to capture these fish for the aquarium trade is really, really bad. So a couple of the ways they do this, number one, cyanide. So they take cyanide in bottles and they will squirt the cyanide into the cracks and crevices on the reef where the fish are hiding. And the, what cyanide does is it actually blocks oxygen from the fish. So the fish comes out and it's like disoriented and dazed because it's not getting the oxygen that it needs. It's slow, it's easy to catch. They cap, the fishermen catch all of these fish and then sell them on the market, okay? Um, the fish recover a little bit, but actually um, they recover enough to like be sold. And then when you get them in your tank, they actually tend to die really fast because of the cyanide. And then the cyanide that they use on the reef kills the coral, right? Because it's poison. The other thing that they use is dynamite, <laughs> okay? So dynamite. They will drop a stick of dynamite into the water, explode, shockwave stuns the fish, they scoop up the fish, but you've just dropped a stick of dynamite on a reef. Like that explosion damages the reef. Okay, so we're not so smart sometimes. Um, so those are some of the methods that they're using to capture these fish and stuff, which is just bad. Okay, so why do we care about coral reefs? Why do we need to protect them? Um, well, one of the main reasons is it's the habitat for a lot of different animals. So it's a place for many unique species to live. They're not found anywhere else other than in coral reefs in the ocean. Um, and if you kill the reef, these animals are perfectly adapted to living in the reef environment. So you take away the reef, they won't survive because a brightly colored pink and orange striped fish is not going to survive well in the open ocean. It's like a beacon for predators saying, come eat me, please. Okay, so they're not going to survive outside of that reef environment. Um, that's bad because we get a lot of commercial value from reefs um, in several ways. Number one, we harvest coral in order for, for like buildings and stuff. They've got limestone, so we can actually harvest some coral to get some limestone for concrete and stuff like that. Um, also live rock for aquariums. And then animals that live on the reef compete for space, like sponges compete for space. And sponges, when they compete for space, they release toxins or chemicals into the surrounding water that prevent cells from dividing and growing. Um, cancer is a bunch of cells dividing and growing too fast. So several of the sponge species that are found on coral reefs are being used for investigation for, um, for cancer cures, right? Because if you can stop the cancer cells from dividing, you beat cancer. Okay, so um, if you take away the reef, you take away these animals and now potential cures for cancer and other kinds of drugs um, that could be helpful to people are gone as well, okay? Um, so. Coral reefs also help to provide protection for, for animals and for you. Um, if your house is located on the shore, the coral reef actually um, helps to protect the shore from waves because all the waves break on the reef rather than on the shoreline. Um, and then that lagoon uh, is formed by the reef. It's shallow, so open ocean predators can't get in there. Um, and so the animals that live there are protected from these big open ocean predators. Uh, so that's also a problem. Um, other commercial value that we get from reefs, you get all sorts of animals like lobster. If you like to eat lobster, lobsters spend a lot of their life on a reef, okay, at some point. Um, and then tourism, lots of places get money from people coming to see their reefs. So like you go to Australia, one of the things that you probably want to do is snorkel on the Great Barrier Reef, right? Or dive on the Great Barrier Reef. So it, that ecotourism is a big part of like the income in Australia. All right, does that make sense? Okay. 